So actually, I'm not sure if I've talked about plasma in the past, at least plasma specifically. Uh, well, let's, let, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Alesh Paul. My, my, my description is much more different than before. I mean, besides organizing sprints, I do other things with my life. Um, well, that's my email. I'm on the KDV board. Uh, I've been uh, developing KDE for over 10 years. I put over 10 years here, but it's actually 12. I'm, I'm starting to feel old. Or starting, yeah. Well. And uh, I'm employed by Blue System. Actually, my realization that I'm starting to feel old was that not only I've been uh, for 10 years a KDE developer, but I've been more than half working for Blue Systems, which is a weird milestone in my life. Anyhow. I develop uh, things. And actually, the project I'm going to talk about it here uh, has been something I've been doing for Blue Systems specifically. Like, I do KD stuff on my own time as well. Um, yeah. All right. So I I'm going to talk here. Well, first of all, I'm going to talk about what I did for Blue Systems. But I, it's not only me being working on this. Actually, not only in Blue Systems and not only in KDE. There's several people who have been. Um, worried about performance in the past. It's well, a recurring subject for a uh, software engineer, I guess. Um, and well, I'm going to talk a, a bit about where we come from, the tools I've been using, because, well, talking to you guys about a success story, I mean, it's kind of uh, a nice, hard feeling, but uh, it's not that interesting, maybe. So we'll be talking about the tools we used in case you want to. Um, optimize something, and we will end up talking a bit about the state we're in now and where to go from, from here. Um, for me, I didn't really look at uh, that plasma startup uh, like ever, like, like I said a bit earlier, or maybe hinted at, I wasn't that much of a plasma developer until, well, until this thing came into the, um, <laughs> you're the official woohoo -er of, until this device came into, well, I would say my hands, but actually it would be my boss's hands. Um, they talked about it uh, before on the other talk, basically, well, because they're co-workers, so they had the same problem. And also, it's, it's a very interesting pro um, product, right? Um, like they said, it's a very cheap laptop, and, well, we do a lot of, of have a lot of, of uh, laptop users, and, well, in general, you develop on, I mean, this laptop is probably 2,000 euros. I cannot extrapolate every experience I have with my laptop to what well, other people, other users are going to have, right? For example, I, I remember, I, I am not hearing that much anymore, but some time ago, you would get these people coming with a spinning disk on their system and saying, well, my something takes a, a really long time to start. And yeah, I mean, my laptop cannot reproduce that. And I wouldn't, I don't know, get a super old computer to do that. Maybe that would have been the, the nice thing to do. In any case, the big problem with this uh, device was that, um, well, I.O. was super <laughs> slow. Uh, actually, it was even slower for us, because uh, since we needed to iterate on the device, we were testing mostly from the SD card. Uh, which actually wasn't that much slower than the internal disk on, on the device, because the internal disk of the device is also really slow. But it was quite slow, super slow. Uh, definitely much slower than any other laptop. So uh, the, um, well, the profiling we did, the improvements we did, probably were only seen uh, mostly on, on the I.O. part. Actually, that other laptop, it was, or is, dual core. and several gigabytes of RAM already. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's decent hardware. It's just that it took a long trip to just get things from, from, from the operating system and back. Right? Um, one thing, for example, we started looking at was K-Package. K-Package, you, you will know that Plasma has been uh, using, it, it's a framework that we use for um, having small plugins that uh, people contribute. Maybe like old Plasmoid, for example, come from a K package, but it's not only that. There's several pieces of our architecture that, that we'll be using it. And for example, we found in this case that we were 
reading some of the metadata files several times. And like I said, meta re reading from this was super slow. So well, cutting down on that was a, a huge advantage. In this laptop or the laptop I had back then, well, reading, I mean, it obviously is slower, right? But it's very different if it's a slowdown of one millisecond or 100 milliseconds when well, your, your laptop is doing things super, super quickly. Um, what we did there was that, making sure that we don't read too often, we don't write too often, uh, because when, when we write, we have to read again, because, uh, well, it's desktop files. We have another problem with kpackage, which is that it doesn't depend on, on kconfig, because it's a tier one package. In kconfig, we have the good uh, desktop file parser. It relies on a path. <laughs> kconfig pass that we have in, in another uh, framework, which is slightly slower. So we actually started uh, converting these um, metadata files into JSON, which is actually what we're using for the rest of, of Qt plugins that we have on, well, all over KDE. So we will see that if you have K packages we're installing right now, uh, the desktop files and the JSON files is because, it's actually because of that. And I, if, if just make sure that you're installing the metadata JSON file uh, for your systems because uh, well, it will help a lot the, the loading, although it's not technically necessary. We fall back into desktop file if it's not available. Um, something we also started looking, which is uh, what was uh, StarKD. StarKD is a script, or was a script actually, uh, from, well, back in March uh, 99 which is a uh, well, long ago, and it grew all over the years, like slowly but surely. When, when we started looking at this, I mean, it, was, it wasn't like super old only, but it also was, um, yeah, we, it, somebody forked it at some point because we started working on Wayland, and I mean, adding ifs, especially in bash, was boring, so it was much easier to duplicate all of the code, so I mean, that's what we ended up finding. Um, here, uh, I moved something. I'm missing something in my slides. Oh, it was. All right, well, whatever. <laughs> I, I had the. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, right? All right? Let me see if I can get it now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, I fished the, um, the URL where somebody started it in, in SVN. Actually, I think that it's not even the first version. It's just the first version I could find because it was coming from CVS like even uh, longer ago. Can I add a new tab? Oh, it's in the wrong screen. Well, this is the first StarKD I could find. Uh, can you read anything? Well, what it was doing back then was doing some K control in it, starting an audio server, uh, starting a window manager sound, WM sound. I don't know what would that be. Then it had a slip, and which was uh, forked because there's an ampersand in the end, but it was still slip. And it was launching the KFM, which was the KD file manager, which is what we used back then. As, a, as what we use right now as Plasma Shell. And then the K panel, which was a different process. You can see it there. Um, well, that's a script that evolved into weird Frankenstein over Monster, over like, well, 20 years, essentially. <laughs> even, even, even forked. Um, basically there, uh, my task ended up being uh, when, when we, back when we were doing the when we, when we were doing the um, the pine book was making sure that I mean it was a like super long script doing a lot of uh, setting a lot of environment variables launching processes checking the result of the launch process obviously like all of these calls since it's bash it needs to like wait for the well first start the other process which would you one would think it's it's fast and actually it's fast. But I mean, it's not as fast as just sending something to the processor um, like we do in C++, for example, right? It needs to 
uh, well, load a bunch of libraries and make sure that things happen. Then it was doing a lot of that. What we did that time was add a bunch of ampersands, on, for example, on things that we needed to make sure that they were launched at some point, but, um, well, not necessarily, um, not necessarily, um, we didn't no need to know if it had succeeded or, or so. Well, um, then we also looked at Clazy. I don't know if it's a tool you've looked at, but it's super useful to make sure that, uh, well, we're making the best use of Qt that, that we want. It, it has a bunch of plugins that we will check whether well, something could be done better. It's um, a Clang uh, plugin, so it uses all of the knowledge that Clang has about our source code, which is actually like much more than ourselves. Um, well, it gives you some warnings and hints, and actually it even has some functionality for, um, well, it's called fixits, which basically means that it modifies your code with code that is theoretically better and then you get to decide if you commit that or well, report a bug. Um, we did a bunch of improvements there. We did a lot of, well, like I was saying before, making sure that we don't read file, too many files. Um, one thing we do, which is, um, which is very powerful in KD, kconfig, every time that you open a config file, it will fall back to uh, KD Global's file that may be installed by your system provider or by you, yourself. There, there are some global variables that will override the, the values that, that the user is getting. Um, this makes a, a lot of sense in many cases and it's very powerful, but there are some other cases where we're just using kconfig to read a specific file and we don't need to like check globals or check something else. Every time that we load the, the KD globals file, we'll have to actually read an actual file in the file system and um, well, see the values, put them on a map. This is not, I mean, it's cheap, <laughs> but it's not for free. Um, so if we can save that, well, that was quite useful, especially on a device where the IO and the disk IO specifically was, was low. And like I said, sync. Like you will imagine there were a lot of cases where um, experiments that say this improves a lot, but then they didn't end up um, in production. Well, one thing that I tried that actually we ne never ended up merging in the end was having the KD Globals file al always loaded in the background in, in kconfig. Uh, and actually this had some, like, like you, we could have proof that it was better, but then we would have had to make sure that the cached information was uh, up to date all the time. And I mean, this adds some kind of complexity, which would have mean code, more code and possibly things not working. So we didn't go there. Maybe we will want to go there. But in, in general, if you see th these kind of things, well, consider if it's worth it or not and well, do it. Uh, another experiment we did was actually like, um, like I said, our K package files, so plasmoids can, are, well, they're, they're essentially a little folder with a bunch of files inside. And what, what you do when you're using these formats is basically starting to read several files that, that are inside. It will, you will have the metadata, but then usually some QML file inside or JavaScript or, or well, whatever. And something that we found that in this specific case improved uh, performance was putting, um, well, those packages in separate RFCC files. For those of you who don't know RCC files, they're kind of like a zip file that is more or less trans transferably integrated with Qt. So you can tell Qt just load this RCC file and then use it uh, transparently. Uh, this was an improvement, and actually, at the moment, you can tell K package when you create it to well create an RCC file instead of just uh, installing all of the files. It's just something that you have to uh, opt in on because I have the uh, I, I think that uh, it had some kind of regression on some platforms, but uh, for example, on the on the Pinebook, it was uh, definitely better. Um, this whole Pinebook thing happened, I think it was late 2017, maybe 2019. Like I said, I'm getting old, so 
what, what do I know? Uh, but in May 2019, uh, we had a whole new effort into starting uh, improving startup for Plasma, coming from a whole different context. It wasn't because Pine or anything like that. There's a company interested in Plasma who said, this is too slow and I don't like it. Here's money, Mr. Blue Systems. And Mr. Blue Systems said, yeah, sure. Uh, so, and since I had been working on it, kind of, um, while well, I started working on, on, on startup again, but well, yeah, me too. And, um, well, first of all, this time, what I did was um, create the script. If you're curious, you can take a look at it. Uh, basically, what it does is it compiles a tool that uh, comes from systemd called systemd bootchart, which basically tracks all of the uh, well startup uh, chronogram and presents it to you in an SVG file. It does a couple of other things, like installing um, a file that you can use from uh, SDDM afterwards that will that will let you choose like to start with with this thing. And it will help you well, profile the Plasma startup. It, it will give you a beautiful uh, SVG file. I will show you in, in, a, in a second what it looks like uh, with, well, with how much time it was spent doing what. Uh, and actually, yeah, we're gonna look at the first differences we had there. Uh, here, Oop. oh no, and here. It's in the wrong screen. Nope. Oh, I have three of them now. So, um, uh, actually, the, one of the first interesting things with it, I mean, the script itself was just to see myself what it looked like on my laptops, but, well, nobody would trust me if I said there's improvement in my computer. So we installed it on, on uh, Neon's um, CI so that, well, whenever there's a new ISO or something, we would uh, generate one of these uh, graphs. And... Well, that's from my eighth, May eighth, no, 2023. 20, it says over here, but well, on the URL it says 23. Um, what you can see here, for example, is that, uh, for example, there's uh, a lot of, a, a big spike here. Most of the CPU usage is at the beginning, of course. And actually not at the, at the very beginning, like there's some kind of idle time that is the computer is actually starting to well see the light, but not really anything is happening. And here below we can see all of the processes. For example, um, well, one of the limitations of, of, of this is that case plus QML uh, is using a spinning thing that is not really supported by the graphics driver of the VM running on the Neon CI. So basically it's, it's rendering the spinning thing and well, it shows a lot of CPU, but on any laptop r running a normal graphics driver, you won't get so much spinning CPU usage. But other than that, it's it's completely quite accurate. Um, we also see these weird things happening. This is coming from from Ubuntu somehow. But but in general, the the plan was let's see if we can squeeze this whole thing a bit into the into the start. Uh, a bit after that, we we changed it. Uh, for example, you can see that this was mov moved a bit after, uh, well, quite a lot after. Actually, this is um, the discover notifier. Well, looking at the app database to to see well if there's updates on the system or not. For example, here we moved it a bit later, so that. Um, well, it wasn't something that, that we needed, so the user can wait to see if they, they, they need um, system updates or, or what. Um, we, can, we can see that here it's, it's starting a bit, uh, doing things a bit, a bit earlier. 
I, can, I will show you uh, a bit now what, why that was. But, but in general, you, can, you could have seen that uh, having nice tooling, uh, it, it gives us some kind of edge uh, on knowing if, if the um, improvements we've been working on are, are useful or not, or we are wasting our time. Boom. Um, one of the, uh, the, the tools we use that are most important is Divas. You will uh, hear about it a lot. One of the ways of seeing in, um, visualizations of Divas is using uh, the Bustle tool. Installing it in your distro is a bit complex because it's also a bit edge, but there's a really nice flat pack that is maintained by the, by the owner or the well, maintainer. So you can just install that. Basically, what uh, it gives you is a nice chronogram. Well, it's not even, but yeah, it's a chronogram as in the time increases vertically, but you can see how every process talks to each other. And if there's some process that is blocking, you will get to see as well with the, with the little arrows. Um, this, for example, showed us how we were doing a big load of, of network manager calls Actually, at the beginning, and first I thought, all right, let's look at Plasma, Plasma Network Manager because it must be shit. And then actually it wasn't. I mean, there were some improvements we could have, uh, I did there and we could do some more. But actually there the problem was that actually Qt on, every, on the start of every application, it starts querying about all of the different networks that are available on the system. And actually, it's, it's blocking on, on all of them. I have a tiny patch for Q Network Manager so that it doesn't block anymore. But we will have to look into why is it needed to have all of the Network Manager state copied into every, every Qt process. But in general, I mean, it's, it's very nice to be able to see who's asking what and, and, and what's happening. It's also useful uh, for you if you want to like improve the battery on, on your system, see if the applications are waking up and working up other processes to ask for things. Well, then you can get to think about whether it makes sense or not, and if it doesn't, well, fix it, right? There's something really weird, maybe somebody here knows, is that I do have some kind of process that keeps asking resolve for the host name of my system. It happens like every five seconds, I mean, it's fine, right? Like my laptop is not going to hurt because of that, but it's, it's weird and it annoys me. And it only annoys me because I've seen it on the thing. If I hadn't seen it, I, it, I would be happy. <laughs> In general, uh, also looking at uh, whatever is blocking. To, to fix uh, blocking calls, what I did was using GTB, uh, adding a breakpoint to the Qt fun function that says, let's do a blocking call and see why, why it was blocking. And if it's possible to remove it, then you remove it, and life is, is, is nicer. Um, and Network Manager, a Lib Network Manager, Qt actually does a whole lot of, of blocking there, but I don't know if it's, there's much we can do there. Uh, and grouping, um, we had actually Kai, it was, he did some improvements on, well, querying APIs. That, it's, it's uh, not very powerful if you have to keep asking things one by one. You can actually say, give me all of these objects, and, and it returns you a big XML file that you can just pass at once. I mean, in, in this case, for example, like, it's, it's so much more powerful or much, much faster to, to ask for a lot of stuff and process it locally than do about, uh, a lot of requests to another process, right? Because, like, you will have all of the processes swapping back and forth on your system, and well, that's not fun. Definitely not, uh, not performant. A good tool to look at uh, memory uh, is, is Massive. Massive is one of the tools by Valgrin. I'm not gonna show it today, but it's something you need to keep in mind. The, the big reason why Massive is, is important for performance is not that much because you want to actually your, have your processes not take a lot of memory, which you actually do, like you don't want to take all of the <laughs> system's resources, but it's also very slow to, well, allocate memory and, and deallocate it all, all the time. Um, so we need to, well, use that and make sure that you don't do a lot of things. Okay, Cascreen is the same, but instead of using Valgrin Massive, you will use Massive uh, Valgrin Colgrin, and it gives you 
well, where in the CPU it's spending the, the time. We need to remember when using Valgrain tools is that it's not actually running on our processor. It's some kind of um, virtual machine. So it would, will not be 100% representative about what we're doing. But in general, it was really well. Another one I, I really like, uh, actually, like this one and um, massive visualizers have been uh, developed by Million from GitHub, and he's awesome. He's also a KDE developer. That's why I'm praising him. Uh, Hotspot is, is really cool. This is Hotspot, and basically uh, you, you get to look at where in your, wh where you're spending time in your process. You can uh, filter by processes. So when I was talking about uh, blocking calls, I mean, it's especially bad if you're doing blocking calls because it will be slow, but um, it's only, or it's especially a big problem when you're blocking on the main thread, right? So if you actually keep the rest of the system or the process from proceeding, but if you can put it into a separate process, it's uh, usually nice. So what you can see here is that, that's why I took this uh, picture, is that there's a big chunk over there that says red image. This is uh, plasma loading the wallpaper. And when I looked then it was like a big 30% or so of the whole run. And well, it helped me uh, track down a, a bug in, in Qt. So this is after fixing, you can see like before, after, after, before. Oh, it's a bit slow. So, uh, well, with this, actually, the, the, um, the patch was really simple. I can show you the patch if you like. But, well, we, we didn't just improve Plasma. We did improve all of the, all of the um, well, cute users of PNG images, right? So basically, what it was doing is it was still loading an image that was the same size of my display, but it was scaling it. It was scaling it to the same size that it was, which is, um, well, unnecessary. But um, well, it was doing it. And now it's doing it much faster because it's just putting the image where it has to be and, well, not processing it. Brilliant. Another nice tool, this one is coming from, from GNOME. It's sysprof. The, why this is uh, interesting is that it doesn't focus on one process. It will be profiling the whole system. So, for example, what I did was modify my Plasma startup script to call these two things, which basically is uh, start the um, sysprof, and then after 20 seconds, uh, systemd will kill it, right? So I was only concerned about the first 20 seconds, so I started a process that started gathering all of the information. After 20 seconds, I read the information, uh, well, I killed it so that it was saved on the system, and then I would analyze it. QML is something we use a lot. Uh, we need to remember to uh, only initialize the, the objects when the, all of the properties are set. It's not fun that we spend all of the, all of the time with um, well, pro uh, properties changing quickly. We can delay things using the QML loader. And there's key object tracking. Uh, I am actually out of time, so you can look at my blog what, what it's about. But if you use QML, I think that it could be interesting for you. There's API trace, which is nice. If you're using OpenGL, you will get to know, well, which call OpenGL calls are being done, which textures are, are being uploaded, if they're too big, if they're too many, anything that can be reduced, you will be able to see there. GPU Vis is a Valve developed uh, tool that you can use to see where actually, like, um, every process is uh, spending time on and how it relates to the V blank of your graphics card. It's well, pretty cool as well. And one of the things I did, for example, was dumping that bash script because bash is not how we make things fast. We're using C++ now. We're using libraries. Um, well, if you want to hear some stories about that, um, you can ask me when I have a beer in my hand and I will tell you all about it. Well, we ported uh, away from deprecated APIs and like crazy related things or things that you see that they could be done better, like this hash kind of problem. We had tens of these. I mean, it looks absurd, but whatever. 
um, and things to do, there's uh, Plasma Shell, and actually every Qt process is doing font config loading wrong. If we do font config loading right, we're gonna improve the startup of any uh, Qt process. So it's not gonna be only Plasma. Actually, it will be Plasma, it will be Queen, but it will be Kate, it will be Dolphin, it will be everything. So let, we have to look into that. I started looking into that a couple of days ago, so I didn't fix anything there yet. Actually, there was a guy who even did his degree thesis on it, or her bachelor's thesis on it, and he just didn't com com contribute it upstream, which is, well, sad. But, oh well. We're uh, doing more things with Wayland, better tooling with Dbus would be interesting, and yeah. Thank you so much, Alex. Any questions? So about the dbus performance stuff, there's also an environment variable called qdbus blocking call main thread warning milliseconds. And if you set that to zero, you effectively get a warning on console every time something does a blocking dbus call, and then you can just go through all of them and fix them, right? Cool. Any questions? Um, do you have uh, changes in QT6 regarding QML, will they change anything for you in startup? Uh, everything I've been working on has been Qt5. Uh, there's, well, there's that change. It's already, actually, that one was on 5.12. There's a couple on 5.13. But in general, like, you should have available, if you have a nice rolling distro, you will get it as soon as possible. I'm sure that the brilliant things that are talked about will have a, an impact, definitely. <laughs> but I didn't look at that. Okay. Any more questions? Do you have a, a before and after picture, like time used in booting Plasma before your changes and after? Like um, it's 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 kind of hard to have. Like we could show the, the boot chart from like yesterday and we'll be able to see some differences. But actually, um, my last uh, improvements have been in Plasma Shell itself. And I, it's actually kind of hard to tell when actually Plasma Shell is, is loaded. But if you want, I can prove you it boots really fast on my laptop. <laughs> OK, any more questions? OK, thank you, Alex.